I'm just going to take care of myself for a moment. I'm going to take a breather. I'm going to try and work it out. But at this moment, I'm not able to deal with this. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. It's whatever. And, and that's fine. And that's, the, that's one of the big messages, you know, I think we need to, we need to also put forward because you're not a machine, you're a human being and a human being needs rest and a human being needs, um, they need care and they need love. And the first place that's going to come from is from you for yourself, you know, um, and maybe I think if you give yourself enough care and enough love and enough appreciation, that maybe that will help you to do it for others as well, because that's part of the gift of being um, a, a, a person that actually takes care. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte, identifying your blocks and demystifying your struggles so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another podcast with Brandon, myself, and Evan on the other side of this, who's going to say something in a moment. And we're going to get into a topic called moving through the setbacks. And I'll just move forward through the oh, setbacks. Oh, yeah, that's right. Moving forward through the setbacks. I said it wrong. It was a setback that we move forward. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you know how it goes. We talk so much sometimes before these things even happen that, you know, you forget the little, the little elements, the little words, the things anyway. Um, so something that I was going over in, in one of the classes that I teach about story was that when you have a setback, a lot of people look at setbacks as I, I have to go backwards. And what I just did was a waste of time because I found out it didn't work. And now I have to go back to someplace to start again, to go another way. And this is a really great thing to do when you're writing a screenplay to create setbacks for your characters, actual setbacks where they actually try something and not only does it not work, but they can't go forward if they cheap, keep trying to go the way they're, they're going. And so they actually literally have to go back. And sometimes like to give you an example in a movie where this might happen or a story, they have to go back to someone that they just burned a bridge with something even worse. Like, and it's just like, Oh man, like I really screwed up. You know what I mean? That type of thing. And this is great because it creates awesome drama and it creates great conflict and all of this, but these things happen in life and stories are really just a model of life. And so something that I was kind of pushing to my class, you know, <laughs> is to look at a setback, not as actually going backwards, but you're always going forward because you had to go the wrong way to find out that that was not the way to go. And you come back actually moving forward because that was the only way you were going to find a new, better way to go forward. So it was all forward movement. And I know you're going to kind of add to this, Evan, but something you said before the podcast, you know, uh, you know, just about persistency. And then we try and things don't work out and this type of stuff and keeping our enthusiasm up. That that's one of the hardest things, like not just as an artist, but as an entrepreneur, you know, all of these things. And so I think if you look at setbacks this way, you can keep your, your enthusiasm a little bit higher when you're, when you're walking back from something that didn't work out to try again and go again, because persistence alone. And, and, you know, if you know anything about me, you know, that I'm very persistent, but one thing I've learned about persistence is persistence alone doesn't always work. You can't just keep like pushing on a wall that won't give. Eventually you have to realize I'm not getting through this wall. I have to go around. And sometimes that means you have to backtrack. And, and that isn't always considered when we think about persistence. It's a very important part of it. One last thing, Evan, I know you're about to do your intro mm -hmm. on your, on your side, but I played soccer for a long time and I played at a very high division. And one thing that we learned in soccer, you know, our coaches would always say to us, don't be scared to go backwards. You know, you move the ball forward, you try to get in, get it over here, get it over into the zone. Everyone closes you down. Don't be scared to go backwards, back it up to the rest of the team. 
you know, bring the play backwards. And that doesn't mean that you lost forward progress. It just means you're moving the ball and you're not losing possession. And that's an important part. So that's what I have to say to intro. What's your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. Don't lose the possession. I, I feel like that might be an apt metaphor to, to come back to at, at some point in time. You know, it's like it's, but uh, I'll throw in another quote. I think it was from Dan Millman. Just sometimes you've got to take, uh, sometimes you got to take a step back so you, you can get a running start. Mm, um, yes. But yeah, I think there's a lot of sort of trying to flip some of our perspectives around the ideas of, of setbacks and what they actually are. Because I think it's, it's mostly our attitude towards the things that happen um, while we are, I don't know, I suppose in pursuit of something or while we are um, working towards something, um, you know, these, these challenges can arise. Certain sort of struggles, I suppose, can, can come up. And sometimes things just don't work. And how we look at those things can have a tremendous effect on, as you said, enthusiasm, you know, like our, our level of enthusiasm and, you know, and, and honestly, sometimes I feel like enthusiasm might be overrated. Use it when you've got it. But in my own experience, uh, sometimes I don't have a lot of enthusiasm for anything. For me, this conversation and, and what really wanted, what, what I really wanted to talk about in, in some of this subject that we're diving into is, is as you were saying, persistence. Um, when you keep going because you're, you know, you're going in the direction you're supposed to, you know what I mean? And just to, to flesh that out a little bit more, you know, I've been teaching for a while and, uh, teaching actors and, and, that and doing it on my own, you know, not like teaching at somebody else's school or anything. It's also, so I'm, I'm running a business too. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur and that's a whole, you know, there's a whole mind fuck of entrepreneurship that happens there as well. Um, because you are, you're all over this thing that you're doing. Like, it's not only that I'm just, that I'm teaching, but like my teaching is also my my business it it is i'm the face of this thing and and sometimes things don't always work out you know sometimes you put something out there and it just doesn't get a response that you're hoping for um you know something that you're excited about doing or whatever and it doesn't mean that it was a bad idea or that it was a, it's a stupid idea I mean, if we want to go to our law of seasons, maybe it's just not the right time for it, you know, but, um, you know, it's easy. It can be so easy when we're in the pursuit of something that we really care about to get discouraged. In fact, I would say it's more easy to get discouraged when we, when we're doing something that we really care about doing. And what do we do about that when we get discouraged and, and feel Like, like when we're questioning whether things are going to work, you know, whether things are going to go forward. And I think that that's an important thing for us to talk about as well with this one. Um, and just keeping on, like keep going. Like, and as you're saying, sometimes that persistence means you have to find a different route and it doesn't mean that it's a setback. It doesn't mean that you're ha you, that you you're making a huge backward step somehow. It's always a forward step in some way. Um, but that, that, that sort of persistence, um, is all in service to something that has meaning to you. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of this stuff is it's all perspective and it's all how you look at it. And one of the things I used to say in my movie maker school, <clears throat> I still say it every now and then, but it's like, uh, I, used to, I always say all perspective all the time because it's, it's all perspective. It's all how you see it. It is what you see it as. It's not what it is necessarily because if I see it one way and you see it another way, 
the winner is the one that sees it better. And it does change it. And, and another example we can use, and this is actually from the same section of the course that I teach, but like we talk about what's a problem. And most people have a very negative connotation of problem. They think problem is bad, you know, it's not whatever, right? But a problem is just something that needs to be solved. And actually you can like problems. You can be like, oh, how exciting. An opportunity to figure something out, to work this out, to solve it, to explore it, to investigate it. You know what I mean? To, to look into this, to research it, right? And, and a problem can become this exciting thing and not this negative, like, obstacle or challenge right and like there's another word and that's another word we use uh, as we go through the section of the course as well and i'll just bring it up challenge it's like a lot of people think challenge is a bad thing oh, i'm challenged i'm challenged right now i'm being challenged it's like great a challenge means you have an opportunity to rise up and grow and become more of who you need to be but if you don't look at it that way then you're going to run into a lot of problems that you need to solve <laughs> and if you don't like problems then you're going to just get stuck and you're going to get discouraged. Right. So like it all falls upon itself, right? Like, so your entire perspective, if you're willing to uproot it, you can change your whole life. You can change everything and you can find out that there's so much more that's possible for you. And uh, one last thing I'll say about that is that like sometimes a setback is your own entitlement. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that you thought, that you were entitled to be able to go through this way. You thought that you were special or that you were allowed or that you had you, and you find out you don't, and you're not special and you don't have it. And, and you know, whatever else. And sometimes the problem is solving your own entitlement and realizing that, Hey, like, I'm just like everybody else in that respect. And, and I don't, there's no special, like, there's no special sauce, right? It's just, it's just tenacity, you know, there were like, like, like I, I was a very skillful soccer player and near the end of my career, like I had a lot of good footwork and I could really shoot the ball and I could pass. And I could do a lot of great things. And I was fast. I was really, really fast. And the thing is, is that those things are great, but they don't entitle you to scoring and they don't entitle you to a good game. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is bigger than you and they're pushing you around or they're marking you tight, you know, and if you're not playing soccer, you might not understand what I mean. That means when someone's like on you, they're like on you everywhere you go on the field, they're like right next to you. They're like holding your shirt. They're tying you down and they're bigger than you. And they're, and they just won't let you go. And they're, and they just have, tactics to slow you down and hurt you and, and just do things like that. And it's brutal, but it's a part of the game. You're not, you're not entitled to just get away with that. Sometimes you have to learn how to deal with that because the ref isn't calling it. I'll give you an example, Evan, actually, it's even a better example. I used to play forward striker and I'm at the front of the field and the ball, we were playing this team. And whenever the ball went down to our defensive end, you know, I'd be waiting up kind of like, further up the field and the ref had their back turned. There was two players on the defense. They would kick me in the back of the legs as I was standing there and the ref wouldn't see it. It was totally unfair, totally like red card, like get them out of the game, but mm -hmm. they would watch when the refs weren't looking and they would kick me in the back of my legs while I was standing there. And they would like, and I had to deal with this and, and everything in me, I wanted to turn around and just clock one of them and just like, you know what I mean? And there was two of them and one of me and I was being picked on. I was being bullied and it was absolutely unfair. And sometimes in life, you're going to be dealing with assholes. You're going to be dealing with cheaters and thieves and all these types of people. And the thing is, is you can sit and complain and you can whine and you can moan. Or you can just go, okay, what is the higher value and what am I trying to do? Because I knew they wanted me to get ejected from the game. They wanted me to retaliate. And I just took it. And it was one of the worst games of soccer I've ever had to experience, but I did not let my team down because that was more important than my own personal gripe with these two people. You know what I mean? And 
like you can look at that and you can be like, that's so unfair. That's so wrong. I agree with you. It is, but the world is not always fair. And it's not, it's not always going to just like give you, um, the equal opportunity that you think you deserve. And so part of setbacks are you sometimes dealing with the fact that you have to start the race slower than everyone else. You, you have to, you know, you have to deal with things that other people just don't have to deal with. And you just have to get the perspective that I am bigger than that shit. You know, if there's one thing that I could say, and I think I say this pretty much every episode, you are bigger than any setback, any challenge, any problem, any obstacle you face, you are bigger. And if you just decide you are, man, you have no idea what is inside of you. And I'll tell you this, the people who don't face their obstacles, that don't face their challenges, that don't face their problems, they will never find out how big they are. So you go out and you face all of them and you grow way beyond those people and it will show. That's why I was faster. You know why I was faster, Evan? Because I was bullied and I had to learn how to run from the bully and I became fucking fast. I run for my life. You know what I mean? And, and you, you just, you use your adversity to be better than these fucking people that want to tear you down and hold you back and use their weakness and their fucking loser qualities to slow down skill and talent. And I'm telling everybody on the end of this podcast, skill and talent is most found in the obstacle. It's found in the adversity. Just be grateful for it. Don't, don't reject it. Don't deny it. You know what I mean? So this is like, this is one of the big kind of fiery motivations I have for this talk. You know, it's obviously coming out and this is, you know, I hope this fuels a lot of our conversation because this is a, it's a big thing for me actually, you know, as we're talking about it. I, I, yeah, I think that absolutely one, an interesting correlation that I remember when I started to explore it, um, that emerged that's super fascinating is when you discover that, that, what you feel most passionate about in doing in the world, you know, if we're going to try and do some good in the world comes from a place of personal pain. So often where our greatest strength is where we have, where we have pain, you know, something that is like, you know, I really, I really wish that I got this, you know, that, that there was more of this in the world. Cause I could have really used that, right? There's a fire there. There's a fire when you, when you can, can see that. And, and again, that doesn't mean like, and once you get, you know, you, you find that fire, like that can really propel you to some tremendous places, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean the absence of, of challenges, I said along the way, but that's, as you were saying, like the challenges just are there continuing to help you grow, right? To help you, um, become more than, than what you were before, right? Or more than you thought you were, as you were also alluding to that so often is the case, which is like, you're no different. You know, you're just like, I'm the same person that I always was. I just realized that I was capable of this. I just realized I was capable of doing this and I didn't think I was before. And so it's like this, sometimes life is just this game of proving, <laughs> proving to ourselves this thing over and over and over again. Right. And, um, but you know, it can become, uh, it can be become easy to be discouraged and, and whether that's from inner or outer forces, most often it's inner forces that, that stop us more than anything. Um, and I know for myself, like there's lots of things where it's like something didn't work out or something didn't go the way I wanted it to. And, you know, I just would throw myself a huge, you know, pity party for myself and, <laughs> uh, and get so discouraged that I would just, stop doing something, you know, or I would just not put in really a full effort anymore, you know, stop putting in and so much effort that you can't even really say that I was actually trying, you know, it was just like phoning, 
phoning it in as the expression goes, right? And that's not a good place to be, you know, where you're phoning yourself in and, and having something that you know that you were passionate about. And I think that's the thing. When you get discouraged, you kind of sometimes wonder, it's like, do, do I even care about this anymore? And I think a good way of, of finding out is to try and do what you're doing as simply as possible. And by that, I mean, it's like, well, just do some small thing, right? Do some small thing. You're trying to pursue this. You're wondering if you even care about it. Well, how, how can you, how much can you simplify this for yourself? How much can you distill this thing down to its essence? You know, and I know for myself at one point, like with, with teaching, it was, at a point of discouragement, it was just like, well, like I was like, I just want to teach this work. I just want to teach this work to people because when I get to teach this work and when I get to see people go through this process, it just lights me up. Like, it's just, I, I know that it does that for me. And many of the times, and this is also like a sports thing too. Like you hear, you hear athletes say this all the time, particularly in team team-based sports where it's like we're going back to basics we're going back like we're, we're just going back to doing doing the little things simplifying the game right because that can happen in discouragement you, you often find that you've been complicating what you have to do you've mm-hmm. been making it into this huge thing it's like okay well you want to teach a class you want to teach this work all right what's the way in which you can just would be would be make it easy for people to get in there and make an easy decision for people to, to, to let for them to give you a shot, right? To see it, what you do, what's that? And also get rid of this idea of, Oh, I've got to have, you know, I've got to have a dozen people in this class. I got to have 20 people in this class, whatever you work with the people who show up for you. Right. I think that that's where humility can serve us so immensely in making progress, you know, in, in making those forward motions and not getting hung up on the setbacks, that humility that, that can come in because man, big things can happen in with small acts, you know what I mean? And you build from there. And that's been my experience. That's been my experience. I've, I've taught a classroom of two people you know, more than once <laughs> that's happened. It was like, okay, I've got two people, which is really the minimum amount of people that I can, I need to have in order to actually teach this. And, and then not letting that be a thing. Just like, okay, this is who's here. This is who has shown up and still giving whatever you have to that. And, it just changes, it morphs, it, it, it grows, it becomes something more, but like, you know, it's almost like, it's almost in some ways, it's like you're showing the universe, your, your commitment, you know, it's like, it's, it's saying, it's like, you know what? I don't give a shit if nobody shows up for this. I don't give a shit if nobody sees this. I don't give a shit, you know, throwing out the expectations, which is something that we've definitely talked about a lot here. You know, that's why it's one of these great perennial wisdoms, you know, throughout humanity is like letting go of those expectations lets you just do, it lets you just act in a way that is so powerful and so effective and also leads you away from that sense of discouragement that can come in from the, from what we might think of as setbacks. So I'm going to step down from my, uh, my, <laughs> my soapbox, Brandon, take it away. Oh, it's all good stuff, man. I, I mean, you know, okay. I want to just kind of go back to, um, I, I want to kind of go towards the setback and, and what that actually is a little bit more uh, and and just kind of flesh that out because I think there are, there are challenges and and difficulties and things that are discouraging at times 
Um, but there's the, the, the actual setback when something sets you back, right? Like, um, you know, like what is that? Um, how do we deal with that? How do you move forward with that? Um, you know, there's, they come in different ways, right? Like there's the, there's the physical setback where it's like you went the wrong way and now you have to backtrack to the point where you made a choice or, you know, theoretically, let's just call it that. And you, you have to kind of go, if you're on a trail, for example, you have to go back and you have to walk. And, and if you look at the path that you walked physically up to the point where you realized it was the wrong way, and then you had to walk back, you can look at that as um, a setback because you lost the time you would have already gotten on the other trail had you chosen correctly. And um, you lost that double because you had to go as far as you went down the wrong path and as far back down that wrong path, just to get back to the point where you could start again, essentially. And in your mind with that type of setback, I think what's really important is to look at that in terms of going the wrong way was always a part of the path. It was not, you're not, you're not entitled to make the right choice all the time. Nobody is you're going to make mistakes. And if you just own that and accept that you're going to make errors, you're going to do the wrong thing sometimes simply to learn what the wrong thing is. That's part of the journey. And if you can accept that on the most fundamental basic level of setbacks, you are monumentally ahead of most people, in my opinion, because most people, they get a setback and they actually give up because they don't want to go back. It's too embarrassing, too humiliating, too whatever. And they think they're, they, they just bemoan going the right way because they just think about all the wasted time they had and effort and all that junk. The other type of setback, another one that like, uh, you know, is maybe a little less obvious is like, say you spend money on the wrong thing. This is very similar to the physical, like wrong path thing. It's like, oh, now I don't have the money. Now I have to earn that money again to put it towards the right thing. And this was the wrong thing to put my money towards same idea, right? You did the thing. It turned out to be the wrong thing. The lesson to learn that it was the wrong thing, that's what you paid for. And if you can, if you can pay for that with honor, meaning that you can pay for that going like, this is what it was worth to learn that lesson. This is how much that lesson cost mm -hmm. me. You are going to be a great artist and entrepreneur later, because you're going to understand what things cost. Only entitled people don't understand what things cost. People who do shit in life, they understand the cost of things because th th you have to, you have to respect what it costs. And that makes you appreciate things because when you're entitled, you don't appreciate it. And you know, the difference between the person who's in the audience and the person who's on the stage is the person on the stage or the person who's doing it, the person in the arena, however you want to look at it, they paid for the mistakes that the audience member wasn't willing to pay for. And that's the difference. So setbacks are a price of admission in a way. And one more example I'll give you of setback. And if you can think of any other, Evan, Evan I'd love to hear your thoughts. But one another setback is you trust a friend, you loan them something and they steal it. That's the price it costs to learn that your friend is not your friend, that they're a thief, that they don't respect your shit, or they bring it back broken. That's what it costs to learn that about them and to learn that about your trust and to learn that about, you know, the cues and the awareness points that you get about people. That's what it costs. So as you get more mature and more wise, you begin to be mindful about what you loan out and what you trust people with, and you make them earn trust and you respect trust in a new way because you know what it feels like when it's broken. And you therefore also don't become a thief or a careless person because you understand how it hurt you and how it tarnished the relationship that you had with that person. And you might even take it further. And if you did damage someone else's shit that they loaned you or you stole it, you go and you repair it or you replace it because you become that kind of person. That's what a setback pays for. It pays for your humanity and it pays for your, your character. It pays for who you become. So it's worth it every penny. 
it's the it's the wisdom yes you know like it's it's the mistakes when we view them through a you know their most positive light are wisdom yes always always and that's the thing is like you can you can have some you know some authority some speaker up on a stage or a writer of a book you know tell you all these things avoid this and do that and don't do this and blah 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 and all that kind of stuff and and hey that's that's useful that don't get me wrong there's a utility to that but you don't really know you don't really know until you've done it yeah you know like that's <laughs> like i know i've made i've make i make i and i still like make tons of little mistakes all the time uh and I recognize them and I've learned to not get so discouraged which is like oh okay all right I know not to do that next time and the thing is for most I maybe I'm being naive here but I think that for most for most reasonable human beings in the world your mistakes are not game enders you know, the mistakes are not game enders. That's been my experience is just like, oh, okay, made a little mistake with this. All right, I know to make that adjustment. And now it's like that thing is ingrained in me. You know, it's like, it's not even something I need to think about anymore because it's just like, oh, I remember that happened. All right. And it now it, it just, it just shapes, it influences on its own. Like it just becomes a part of who you are, right? And you only get that through the actual action, the actual having experienced it for yourself. Because you can read all kinds of great advice from books and even listening to us <laughs> right now and still go and make a mistake. You know, it was something that's like, oh shit, people warn me about this. People warn me about this. Or I remember hearing something about that. The reason why it didn't stick was because it wasn't real. You know, it was all an idea of something. And certainly, like, we can we can apply those things as best as, as we can. And, and we show that we actually have learned something through the action of it. So it's not that that stuff that you, you acquire along the way isn't useful and that you will actually make that mistake. But it's like when, when it actually comes to the test you know when now it's real world world scenario this thing is happening you've learned this thing that maybe you remember or maybe you don't and you respond to it in whichever way you respond to it and also maybe you you realize that you might realize that the way that you were actually told to handle certain situations or the way that you were told to do it is actually not right for the situation that you're in. And you actually had to go against the rule. You had to go against the advice, the wisdom that you were given. And that was actually the right decision. And that's another thing that you have to learn too. It's like, well, yeah. there's all these rules, but sometimes you actually got to just go with your gut. You know, and that's the right. And you learn just like, oh, you know what? Because I didn't go with my gut. I followed the advice that all of these people told me and that bit me in the ass or I lost out on this opportunity because of this. Now huh. I know that I need to go with my gut the next time around, right? There's just, it's, yeah. life is a dynamic fucking thing. And, you know, and we always want to have, we just want to have answers and solutions and to be perfect and to be able to perfectly respond. It's like the only way you can perfectly respond is to just like, be present and respond, you know, as, as fully as you can with whatever that you've got at the moment and whatever happens from it, you accept it, accept what happens from it and take the lessons and take the successes and take the failures, whatever it is, you take them and they all become, they all become, you know, just, just, uh, as I say, grist for the mill, <laughs> I was trying yeah. to find a different way of putting that one, but they all become grist for the mill. It all becomes something that you use. It becomes something that becomes a part of who you are in the most creative way possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a, I think there's a really important element to all of this, which is the ego. 
and we haven't talked much about it really in this conversation, but I think it's a really important part of it because we can be ashamed when we make a mistake and we can be ashamed when that's public and we can be, um, you know, and we don't, we might be afraid to admit or apologize or, or whatever it might be. And part of dealing with some setbacks is apologizing. Sometimes dealing with a setback is admitting that you made a mistake and owning it and just be like, you know what? I fucked up. I I'm, uh, this is on me. You know what? Um, I'm going to take responsibility for this. That's how you move back to square one and start again. And some people, I actually think they get stuck in these setbacks indefinitely for the rest of their lives. And it like, I don't mean to be dramatic, but this sounds pretty fucking dramatic. <laughs> they destroy their entire life because they're unwilling to admit that they were wrong and that they made a mistake. And sometimes you don't even have to apologize. That's all they did. Or they're unwilling to clean up the damage that they caused in the world. Now, here's something I'll tell you. I believe that every young person should be built strong to deal with a tough world. Not that every person should be soft and, and basically protected from the world. The world is tough. It's brutal. It's harsh. It's unfair. And when you put competition and challenge and unethical and immoral people in place, you, all the more. So you got to develop the ability to deal with that shit. You know, you don't get to, you don't get the light without the shadow. So you got to learn how to be the brightest light and the darkest shadow of yourself. And you need to know how to work in both realms and both places. And you need to learn how to function in a world that is not going to be fair. And it's not always going to be easy. And it didn't give you a handbook that was perfect on how to do it right. And what you need to do is when you make a mistake, you go, I made a mistake. I made an error and you admit it first off to yourself. That's the first thing you do. Second thing you do is if you caused any damage, which you probably did, and you definitely will in life, you go clean that shit up, go clean it up, get over your ego, get over your, get over yourself and just go clean it up. If you broke someone's shit, go fix it or replace it. If you stole something, go give it back. Go replace it. Go, you know what? When we were 12, I took your video game and it was worth this much. And you know what? It was worth, say, 60 bucks. I'm, I don't know. I'm just making something up. It was worth 60 bucks. But it, at 12 years old, that was probably worth $600 to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you back 600 bucks to make up for that fucking bullshit that I did as a kid because I was wrong and that's not right. And I don't want a world like that. Now, if you're that kind of person, you can move fucking mountains. I guarantee it because not only will you repair that relationship in a profound way that is life-changing, but you will repair something in yourself that changes you forever. And when you, and you go, well, I'm not capable of that. You got to work on that. You have to, you have to figure out how to overcome that. Clean up all your messes repair all your relationships, forgive for everything you've done wrong and let go of anybody who's wronged you. Just let that shit go. You know what I mean? Like you can say your piece. And if you're scared to tell someone, Hey, you fucked me over. You did something wrong. Go tell them. Don't expect them to fix it. They might not have that character. They might not have that integrity. They might be, and I don't mean to be mean, but a weak person. Don't be a weak person. Don't be them. But they might not apologize to you. They may not own their shit. Go tell them anyway what they did. You hurt me. You did this. I didn't like it. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. I'm letting you know you can decide if you're going to do something about it or not. But now you know where I stand and now you know where we stand. And this is how you clean up setbacks. This is how you make up for the fucking mess that's your life. Cause it really is a mess. And you have to understand that the sooner you understand that there's all these messes, there's all these damages you've caused and these things you've done and this character you haven't built that's waiting to be built. 
And if you go out and you build that character by cleaning up those messes and repairing that shit, you clean up your setbacks and your life is just forward movement after that. It's just fucking gravy after that. It's fucking awesome. But if you live in shame and you live hiding and you live in fear, your life is not your own. Your life is a mess. And if you can admit your life's a mess, man, you are a strong person. Now, if you're a strong person, you have the ability to go clean it up. Do you see, do you see if it, once people understand this, they, they have so much power in their lives. They can do so much incredible things. It's just that we don't live in a world that encourages us to clean up our mess. And it, it doesn't encourage us to take on our challenges and problems with intelligence, wisdom, and character. And if you have those things, if you build those things in your life, man, you're just fucking unstoppable. And that's what I want for, for everybody. You know, I, I want you to see that that's inside of you. Um, and it, you know, like I fucking, like I share this, like every podcast, I crawled out of depression. You know how I crawled out of depression? I cleaned up my fucking life. It was a mess. I made mistakes. I caused damages. And you know what? Whenever I figure something out, I fucking go make up for it. I work it out. And you know what? I'm, I'm in a great place, but I crawled out of the depths of fucking hell. And that's where you end up when your life is a mess. And sometimes you can make it look kind of pretty because you can have money and a little bit of success and a little bit of whatever. And you can kind of be like, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. is not good enough. Your life should be fucking fantastic. You're alive. You're living, you're breathing. You know what I mean? Like the only way you're going to enjoy that is if you go and, and you clean it up. And I think that's a big part of what setbacks are. Just clean up the mess, just figure it out work it out, build the character, the wisdom and the integrity to do what's necessary and start again. You know, that's how you do it. Hey everybody, this is Evan. And this episode is brought to you by my book. Yes. I recently released a book called the actor's awakening, connecting spirituality to craft, expand yourself as an actor and your craft through a spiritual perspective. Take a journey that will explore universal philosophies and insights to help you understand human nature in a profound way and develop practices to take your work to another level. Again, that's The Actor's Awakening, Connecting Spirituality to Craft, available on Kindle and paperback on Amazon. And as always, if you like the show, please subscribe. Yeah, man. Whew. It's <laughs> spitting, some, spitting some fire, my friend. Spitting some fire. You got fire we're today. Laying down the challenge for, <laughs> for, for everybody here. Um, yeah, I think that something that for me is emerging in this is like to touch on what you're saying is, is yeah, it's this thing of acceptance. You know, it's like just to, like acceptance and, you know, going throwing back a little bit to that humility as well. Um, you know, it's like just like I'm a mess. You know, I'm an I'm an I'm a mess and it's um I'm contemplating how much down the rabbit hole that I want to go with this, but I'll go say, deep, man. Go yeah. deep. Let's do it. Let's go I mean, right you'll, in the <laughs> You'll you'll look at one thing that I've noticed in in just my own personal, you know curiosity and passion for um, you know, sort of the great wisdom traditions through of humanity no matter where they come from there's always in some way whether they're speaking to it directly which is what some are i would say that in the judeo-christian fashion they like to speak to this kind of very directly but every other place even if it's indirectly acknowledges this this thing that you're saying which is just like you're a mess <laughs> most likely you're a complete fucking mess <laughs> of a human being you're holding it together you know but like you're a mess and um and let's just acknowledge that for a second you know that there's that thing of uh i don't know maybe that came from aa but it's but it's a it's the quote's been passed around just in other settings so many times but um you know i'm not okay you're not okay and that's okay mm -hmm. right but that's that is a statement of acceptance. That is a statement of let's not fool ourselves of what is happening right now. 
Let's not let's not kid ourselves about what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'm a mess. You're a mess. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. But we have to we have to acknowledge that to some degree. I think that so many of us are are living in this kind of um denial. You know, and I, I feel like especially in the the at the pace in which things go today, how fast things happen today and how connected we all are through all of these, you know, basically digital mediums. It's so easy to not necessarily easy, but it it's just we have all of these avenues with which we sort of curate these images of ourselves all the time, you know, and in many ways we participate in this perfectionistic type of of um, expectation that we have of one another. You know, and I think that that's a big part of this whole setbacks conversation. You know, like how many of us are going around just trying to do, trying to be perfect all the time, trying to, so afraid of being wrong, so afraid of making a mistake, you know, and I don't blame you. I don't blame you if you feel that way because holy shit, I mean, just go on to Twitter for a little while. You know, like going to Twitter for a little while and just see just the nastiest of human behavior. We ought to accept that that does happen there, right? We have to accept that, that that's, that's out there, but that there's this, that we have to deal with so often a mob mentality of you can't make mistakes because if you fucking make a mistake, you're done, you're Mm. over or you know, at the very least, you know, you're going to be, you're going to hear from a few people who are just going to say absolutely horrid shit to you, which is totally uncalled for, totally unnecessary to do. How are we supposed to be human beings with each other if we can't be fallible, which is what we are? Mm Mm-hmm. How are we supposed to be human if we can't be fallible with each other? That's what with- human is, 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 is error. There's a game, there's a video game called Uncharted. And um, when the first one came out, it was like revolutionary. Like people were just blown away. It was like the biggest thing. And uh, at some point they did an interview and they said, well, what, what, what was it about this game? Like, wh- wh- why is it? why is it working so well? What's so great about it? I, I don't remember the question they asked, but they said the response was basically what we did was we added human error. So sometimes when you jump, if you don't quite jump like at the right spot, you jump too early, he'll just barely catch and he'll scramble a little bit. And it would make, it made it feel real because mm-hmm. that's what people do. We don't always do it perfect. Sometimes we, we we're off a little bit and, and then we make up for it. And that scramble, that, that kind of, making up for it is so interesting and it's such a great thing for like you know movies and storytelling and obviously for video games and things like that but it has a place in art and it has a place in your life and so sometimes you know you're gonna be just scrambling but here's the thing you don't have to do it perfect to do it you know a lot of this stuff it's fine if you scramble you know a lot of it is just if you can just get it done that's enough. And so, um, you know, don't worry so much that you didn't do it perfectly. Don't worry that you tripped or you stubbed your toe or you you stumbled or you, you know, scrambled or whatever the term you want to use is and however you did your error, but like, that's part of it. And sometimes you're going to just plain straight up fail at the thing you're trying to do and it just doesn't work. And you're going to, you know, you're going to stumble in a way where you can't, you can't at that moment, get over it. You just have to deal with the fact that, you know, you didn't quite pull it off. And that's just look at that as part of finding out where your limits are. And I think that one of the 
most interesting things about human nature is when people push the line as to what's possible. If you look at a lot of things that we really like and we really admire, it's usually someone they're pushing the line. They, they, they push that line so close. We're like, how is that even possible? And then sometimes we thought the line was like way back here and they push it so much further past where we thought it was that we're like, I didn't even know that was possible. I thought like, I didn't even think that was even an option. And, and those types of people who push the line so far back, so far beyond what people think is possible, they're like trailblazing, right? They're like showing us that something in the world exists that we didn't know exists, or, or we were, we're allowed to go into an area we didn't know we could go into, um, you know, this type of thing. So I think it's exciting and interesting to walk the line in life, to find that line. And, and the way you find that line is you let yourself sometimes go over that line a little bit. You know, you, you say something that's a little bit inappropriate, inappropriate to find out the line of humor as to where humor is appropriate and where it's inappropriate. You have to walk that line and comedians that play it safe are just not funny. They're just not interesting. Um, the comedians that are the most interesting, they, they, if you watch great standup, they say stuff usually on their specials that you're like, Oh man, I can't believe you talked about it. I can't believe you did it. And I, and I can't believe your take on it because you, you found us, us a way for all of us, audience included to walk into this and look at it where it was previously unavailable for us to look at, but because you brought humor into it and because you took a take on it and because you altered a perspective on it, we've been allowed to walk into that arena that we were never allowed to go. And how exciting is it to be here with you now as you lead us through it? And that's so much what art is. You know, you want to be an artist. You're the one that is bringing people into an area that they've never been able to experience safely on their own. And you're, you're the guide. That's so much what an entertainer and an artist is. You're the guide into the unknown territory that people don't know how to go to on their own. And that's what they pay you for. You know, they pay you for that. And that means exploring the areas of yourself that you don't want to explore, that you're avoiding, that you're hiding from, that you're ashamed of, that you're embarrassed about, that you don't want to forgive, you know, or you don't want to apologize for, you know, that type of stuff. Right. But if you're willing to venture into that area, man, like, man, you can do some pretty incredible things, not just for yourself, but for other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, um, there was something that occurred to me at some point in this conversation. I wanted to maybe just touch on it for a moment or two. Uh, and I was thinking about how, how appreciation comes into this conversation. Um, how showing someone a little bit of appreciation for what they're doing can be so meaningful. It can be so powerful for somebody. And, and I'm just bringing this up as, it's like, I encourage you to just tell people, you know, like if you appreciate what they're doing in the world, tell them. I'm not just saying that this is not me being like, hey, you appreciate what we're doing in the podcast? Leave a review. No, no, no. I, I'm I'm speaking from a different experience here where it's just because I know that there have been moments, some of them not even so long ago, where I've gotten just some wonderful words from people, unsolicited, lovely words from people that have just kind of been like, Oh, right. Right. Okay. I know, like, I know I'm not fucking crazy here. I know I'm not crazy in what I'm doing, you know, because you don't always know, like, like people are, you know, we're full of insecurities. We're full of doubts. We're full of all of these things. And, you know, some of us have, have gotten more practiced at just riding those waves out you know, moving through them, but it doesn't mean that it doesn't affect people. doesn't mean that there still are not days where I've been like, I, I, I just don't want to do anything today. Like, I just don't have it in me to put in today 
tomorrow I'll, I can put in, <laughs> you know, sometimes that's where I'm at, you know, where I, I, I'm just like, I know tomorrow I can put into this today. I can't today. I don't got it. Um, those things happen to, to the best of us. And sometimes just hearing an encouraging word, someone just sharing a, a little bit of appreciation, um, you know, genuine appreciation that, that can just be transformative. You know, that, that can help somebody get through a tough moment and gets, it, it can get somebody through a tough, a tough stretch of time, you know, that, that, so I, I'm just saying that just because I'm like, I don't know. I think it needs to be said. I know I need to be better at it. I don't share enough with enough people, you know, you know, the things that I appreciate about them and what they do. Um, but you know, it's like, I know, you know, it's just like one of those things, how you actually, when you really learn something is through experience. And I know through experience of like just how transformative a couple of kind words can be. You bring in a good point. You know, appreciation is, is is such a valuable resource that is underutilized, I think, in a lot of cases, because we don't always appreciate some of the most simple things that would help us so much. And, and that includes ourselves, you know, I mean, you know, like when you're having a hard day, you know, you're talking about like, I don't have it in me today. Like this is the best I can do as long as you give the best you can do that day. Like if you're just honest, okay, like this is like, or, you know, like mental health day, like, you know, that's a very real thing. That's a self-care thing. And, you know, if you don't take advantage of it, if you're honest about it, like appreciate yourself for being aware that you need a mental health day, you know, like sometimes we do, I mean, this world and the people in it, um, they're not always kind and this is not always easy. And um, if you need a little bit of like, you know, like self care, appreciate the fact that you're going to take the time to care for yourself. And like, you know, I, I kind of spout on a lot about like, you know, like I'm a little bit harder edged with a lot of the stuff I talk about, but at the same time, if you knew me personally, you, you I don't know if you'd. I think you'd understand that there's a deep sense of compassion I have for everybody as well. And look, what I want for you is I want greatness, but I want joy and I want happiness. And if you got to stay in bed all day and that's taking care of yourself, that that is what you need. Do it. You're not, there's nothing wrong with you for doing that. When I was working through my hardest period in my life, there were days where I slept all day and I didn't leave my house and I didn't leave my house for days. And I just, I just rested and I meditated and I was with myself and, and I didn't just meditate. Sometimes I just distracted myself with some stuff, but I was working it out and I was figuring it out. And like, you don't have to be a machine and you don't have to be a warrior every day of your life. You know, sometimes the, the thing that you need to do is be kind to yourself. And I think there's, we need to appreciate the fact that we are not machines and we, we don't do everything perfect and we need rest and we need care. And when we have abusive people in our lives, or we don't have enough caring people in our lives, we need to be those people that care for ourselves. We need to be those people that take care. Um, so, you know, there, there are times in your life where you're just not going to have what you think you need to do, what it is you think you want. But number one, you're the artist. You're the person. It doesn't matter what like painting you paint or song you sing or, or play or movie you make or script you write or book you, you write or whatever the hell it is that you, you want to create and do and, or business you build. It doesn't matter. You are the one doing it and you need to take care of you. So I think it's like this whole appreciation thing is like, you got to appreciate yourself 
And you got to appreciate the people that care about you and, and you build relationships of appreciation by appreciating others, you know? And I think it's a really, really important point you bring in Evan, because like, even appreciate the setback, you know, appreciate the challenge, appreciate the problem, appreciate all the things like, don't look at life as this thing that is just working against you. Try to look at it all as a gift because it really is. And I know that's hard to see. I mean, man, like I, I remember it was just brutal when you, when I couldn't see it, it's brutal. But when you can kind of cross over and you can begin to see that like, wait a minute, all of this stuff is actually helping me if I let it. And it, it's not always gentle and it's not always nice. And, um, you know, when it's not gentle and it's not nice, and if you can't handle it, uh, in that moment, appreciate the fact that you can't handle it and just be like, okay, I, I'm not, I, I'm just not able to cope with this right now. I'm not going to make it anybody's problem. I'm not going to take it out on anybody else. I'm just going to take care of myself for a moment. I'm going to take a breather. I'm going to try and work it out. But at this moment, I'm not able to deal with this. It's too much. It's too overwhelming. It's whatever. And, and that's fine. And that's the, that's one of the big messages, you know, I think we need to, we need to also put forward because you're not a machine, you're a human being and a human being needs rest and a human being needs, um, they need care and they need love. And the first place that's going to come from is from you for yourself, you know, um, and maybe I think if you give yourself enough care and enough love and enough appreciation, that maybe that will help you to do it for others as well, because that's part of the gift of being um, a, a, a person that actually takes care, you know, because you got to start by taking care of yourself, right? I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like what one of the things you were bringing up. You got really quiet on my end, Evan. Oh. Oh yeah, that happens sometimes. All right, that happens you're, you're, sometimes. You're back. You're back. Um, what you were saying uh, reminds me of something that I'm sure many of people have brought this up before. But uh, as always, the the great Alan Watts is the one I remember uh, in this. But you know, part of it is, you know, like when we're experiencing something like feeling overwhelmed or that we're just not like we just can't do it today, kind of a thing part of the major human issue that we face is is trying to is is feeling like we're we shouldn't feel that way you know again it's the resistance it's another way of the, like this for me at least how this whole acceptance thing is is plays into it which is like i feel this way but i can't feel this way i shouldn't feel this way Blah, blah. And essentially what this does is it puts you into a double bind. It actually puts you into a conflict with yourself, which in many respects is harder than the thing itself. Because you are trying to be something, you're trying to be somewhere you're not <laughs> within yourself. You're, you're literally, you're torn in two. Like you're tearing yourself because... The truth of the matter is, is that you actually feel this way. And then there's the way in which you are trying to act in place of that. Now, that doesn't mean that you, I'm feeling overwhelmed, therefore I am unable to act. It doesn't mean that. You can absolutely be overwhelmed and be moved to action but you don't know how to be moved to action unless you accept the feeling of overwhelm. Because usually what happens is we're trying to act from some other place. I'm trying to act like I'm not overwhelmed and act from there. And it's a failure. So often it's a failure. Instead of the acceptance like, okay, I'm overwhelmed. I feel that way. What do I, what, what, how do I act? What, what is the action for me to do and let that move you through it? Because that's the only way that you're actually going to deal with it. That's the only actual way in which you, you find some sort of resolution in it, but it doesn't come from 
acting in that double bind. Normally what happens is you're, if you do, if you are acting from that double bind is you're acting from a place of confusion. And when you act from confusion, you usually create more confusion <laughs> and it just continue. And then the overwhelm just piles back up and piles back up and it just grows and grows and grows and grows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, um, one thing I learned when I was younger was, uh, in college actually was that you, you can lie and fake your whole world to everybody else, but you'll never be able to fake it to yourself because you're always going to have to see yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. And you're always going to know. And I mean the mirror literally, but metaphorically as well, you're always going to know you're always watching yourself. And so you can lie to yourself so much that you actually believe your own lies. And then you get really messed up in life because now you actually believe the, the, the fake thing that you created and you're living by. So at the end of the day, honesty is the best policy. Just be honest with yourself, you know, be real with yourself. And like, um, don't, you don't need to pretend, you know, I, I mean, I think sometimes like, it's not that everyone else needs to know how you feel. It doesn't mean that everyone else needs to go, needs to know about the intimacies of your personal life. That, that, that's usually irrelevant. Usually that's not the case. And most people, it's none of their business. Um, but you need to be true and honest with yourself about what's going on. And I think, um, Evan, you're bringing up a really good point here, which is like, just begin with the process of acknowledging, okay, this is where I'm at. And, and it is, and I know this is a really hard lesson and maybe this is like something that maybe is a different conversation or maybe, you know, maybe you need to do some work to get around this, but like, basically like if you're feeling something, the best way to deal with that feeling is to deal with the feeling not to avoid the feeling, not to try to get to another feeling, not to avoid the feeling, just be in that feeling. Because usually what you'll find is that if you're in that feeling and you let yourself just be in it and you don't make it wrong and you let it be okay, it will pass much faster and you will move to your next feeling. Now your next feeling might be better, but it might also be a worse feeling, but then you, then you acknowledge, okay, now I'm in this feeling, you know, and, and, if you can, as an artist, uh, you know, something that I got from, uh, my, my first acting teacher, June B. Wild, was she used to always say when we were acting, we would say, oh man, like I'm stressed out or whatever's happening in life. And she'd be like, use it. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like use it. Cause like, yeah. what do you get? What else are you going to do? You're here doing your scene. So use the emotion that is there, use the one that is available. And, and, and one of the conversations that would come up very quite often was, but it's not the right emotion for the scene. It's not, it's not how, you know, it's not what it demands of me. And she goes, well, you don't know that you don't know that. And, and just at least work with it. Mm. Don't work against it because whatever you're trying to get to, you won't get to by working against it. And she was right. It was one of the it's one of the token things that I've kind of used throughout my, the, my whole life is just whatever emotion I have, that's the emotion I'm working with at this moment. And it might not be here forever. And so I learned to write from that place. I learned to act from that place. I learned to just do every, anything I needed to do from that place. And you often find that if you just embrace it, it'll change. And I think, um, you know, the acceptance of it is such an, a key a key part of this conversation. It's like, I mean, I'll say one last thing on that. If you've made a setback or you've had a setback or you're in a setback or however you want to look at that, the first thing you got to do is accept it. Cause if you keep trying to push forward, you're just going to keep running into the same wall, getting the same problem, get the same result. Like acceptance is a huge part of what we've been talking about today is you have to acknowledge and accept, okay, I've gone the wrong way. I've made a mistake. I've caused damages. I've done something that isn't working. And once you accept that, then you can actually make a real move. But if you don't accept it, you're just stuck and you don't know why you're stuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you can still push forward, but you, the way you push forward is through, acceptance and I'll, I'll quickly uh just 
turn this in like back into like you know something like the realm of acting you know it's like it's, stuff happens just particularly in live theater stuff happens all the fucking time you know stuff happens and you're in the middle of a show in the middle of a performance and something happens like you tell a one of your own experiences you know of, of a big bowl of spaghetti hitting yeah. the floor <laughs> you know which wasn't planned no. wasn't wasn't part of the uh, of what had been rehearsed and stuff like that you know the spaghetti on the floor is a metaphor for like all kinds of stuff like that that happens on stage that the audience sees you know like the audience sees this from happening and one of the things that you know you learn fairly early on when you're studying acting is just like you have to acknowledge it because if you don't like if you spill that plate, that bowl of spaghetti all over the floor, and then you just well, that's on the floor now, and just move on with the scene without acknowledging that that even happened. As an audience member, we go, "What the fuck is going on right now?" Like we'd think that there's something wrong with these people. <laughs> you know, maybe that's part of <laughs> the whole thing, but you know, it's we would be like, "There's something weird about what's going on here." that just happened and it's not being acknowledged. It's not being addressed. They're not doing it. And, you know, you tell this story from, from the angle of how it, like it brought this really incredible new, um, intimacy to the scene where now you and, and your partner had to clean it up. You know, you had to go through cleaning up this messy bowl of spaghetti off the floor and, and how it actually brought something to it, which is, kind of a lot of what we're talking about too in this conversation but um you have to accept that it happened mm -hmm. that's the first thing that you have to do and i mean yeah because if you ignore it it's just weird it's just weird <laughs> it's, it's just, just weird. totally weird but yeah. we do that all the time in our in yeah, our lives crazy. you know like <laughs> stuff happens and we just like oh no no everything's fine you know that whole thing <laughs> totally. i'm just fine it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine you know, and it's it's not fine. It's no, not it's fine. You it's not deal with fine. It. It's not okay. You're not okay. <laughs> can we just accept that already, yeah. so that we can actually move forward? So that we can actually move on here. And uh, yeah, I, th this whole thing is it's an interesting place that this the, for me at least this conversation has arrived to. That it's, it's I did not know that this was in many ways going to that this idea of acceptance was going to become so um it was going to be become for me so central to this conversation that we've been happening mm. it seems fairly obvious now <laughs> but uh yeah i kind of yeah. see it now as a, it's actually a through line throughout throughout this entire conversation because you know moving forward through a setback is accepting that you've had a setback in the first place and that the that there is something about the setback like i well my opinion i would say is that whatever you do don't choose the story of victimhood and don't choose the story of fear and what i mean by that is that when something goes wrong in your life or someone wrongs you even, whatever might happen, don't look at yourself like a victim. It doesn't mean you're not a victim of crime or whatever might have happened. I'm not saying you're not. But don't tell yourself and live the story of being the victim because the victim is always going for sympathy and they're going for, um, you know, the, the, the story of the victim, I'm saying. Not, not literally you can be a victim and it doesn't mean you have to tell yourself the story of the victim i know this sounds complicated let me quickly explain <laughs> if you walk around your life like you're a victim what that is saying is that you believe that the world or the events or the situations are victimizing you and if you look at it that way it's just hurting you it's not serving you if you look at the world like 
what I would equate to a champion in that, you know what, we just went down a goal and now we're going to lose the game if we don't do something about it. And this sucks. And you know what, one of our own players scored on us, you know, it was an own goal. It was a, it was an error on our team and now we're going to lose the game. But if you look at it, like we need to make up for it, we need to correct this. We need to figure it out. We need to sort it out. It, it's spilled milk. It's already done. Now let's deal with it. That's the champion model, right? Which is like, let's deal with it. It's done. It's happened. Uh, the truth has been exposed maybe, but now let's deal with the truth. The victim is going, Oh, poor me. Now we're going to lose. Now we can't do anything. It's all your fault. Blame, blame, blame. It's that kind of thing. Um, so whatever you do, when you hit a setback or you hit a problem, just don't become the whiner blamer type of model of a person. Be the person that goes, okay, shit went wrong, made the wrong choice, made a mistake. How do we deal with this? What do we do? What's the best strategy to get around this, sort this out, figure this out? You know, how do we come back from this? Right. And look for options, look for possibilities. And then the, the other thing I was saying is don't make choices out of fear because fear is never a good choice. And I can say that undoubtedly prove me fucking wrong. Fear is not the right choice. Even if you're looking at the tiger in the bush and you see it and it's about to fucking pounce on you and kill you, fear is still the wrong choice. It's not going to help you. It's you don't, you don't make choices out of fear. You're, you're wise and aware. Now, if you feel fear, you need to deal with it. And, and when it comes to setbacks, my opinion is this, don't be scared to go back. Don't be scared to admit your mistake and don't be scared to like, just acknowledge and admit, okay, I led myself astray. I led us astray. I made an error. We got to fix this. Become a fixer. Don't become a, like, like a victim of a mistake. You know what I mean? And you're going to make mistakes. Just, just know that you are, and everybody is, and it's perfectly human. It's perfectly normal. It's, it's fine, but it's all about how you deal with it. Mm. I was going to say, if you see a tiger in the bush, I would, I would say either, you know, run or. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> look, here's the thing. Auto automatic fight or flight, fight or flight is going to kick in when it kicks in. That's not something you control. So, you know, that's not a choice. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is, you know, if, if, if real fear kicks in your automatic system will do what it needs to do. You don't need to choose to be scared. Yeah. And if you can consciously choose not to be scared, then your fight or flight is not active and you shouldn't choose fear. So fight or flight works because it works when you're not thinking about it. If you can consciously recognize the fact that you're scared, you have the ability to essentially override fear because most fear anyway, is not the tiger in the bush. You're not about to die. It's not real. Um, it's not even that big of a deal. Um, so if you can override it, you can begin to see that the potential for you is much better if you just you know, but like if your fight or flight kicks in, if you're startled, it's going to happen. I mean, you're going to get scared, but that's not a choice. That's your, your body is designed to do that for you. Um, you know, but, but uh, like I said, like, you know, don't make choices out of fear. A choice is a conscious thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And otherwise, if you're making choices out of fear and you should be able to make them consciously, then you're just an unconscious person choosing to, to be unconscious you know, when you could be conscious and, and, and really that's your own fault, right? Like if you could be conscious and you're choosing to let yourself be unconscious in a time where you're needed in a time where it's required of you to perform, what do you expect? You're not going to get the best out of yourself because you're just giving in, right? You're just giving into it and you're just letting go of the steering wheel and you're just letting it take you off course. But if you can, 
Like if you're scared and all of a sudden you're startled and then you can acknowledge, wait a minute, I'm scared. I don't need to be scared. I, I can, I can deal with this then choose to deal with it. You know, don't let the fear continue to make your choice. Cause when you're in fear, you are unconscious. And that's a really important thing for people to understand. The mm. only time it's acceptable to be scared in this world is when you are unconscious. I'm telling you that. And I know a lot of people probably disagree with me and because they have fears they haven't dealt with, but literally when you are in fear, you are unconscious and you are essentially the slave to what you're scared of. You can override fear and, and you can do it in a way where things that you were once scared of, you don't even know why you were ever scared of them in the first place. And they will never scare you again. And that's a very powerful thing we can do as people. Um, but people are scared to make setbacks. They're scared to make mistakes. They're scared to encounter problems and challenges. They're scared and don't be scared of that shit. You know, cause you'll never live out your life if you're scared of all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. you gotta, you gotta just get over it, choose to get over it and choose to just be like, yeah, I won't do it perfectly. I'll make mistakes, but I'll deal with it when I get there. Let's, uh, let's beer this and wrap this bad boy up. Sounds good, man. Um, all right. I'll go first. All right. Okay. I'm having a beer I already had before. Probably had this a couple times already, honestly. I think I did. It's a hazy blonde pale ale from Sawback Brewing Co. I really like this one. Big fan. So I keep getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I've reviewed it probably twice already. But look, I still like it. I've liked it twice before. Um, they're, uh, you know, Alberta Brewery. And uh, they're good. It's a good beer. It's a solid one. I think it's uh, actually one of their most popular ones right now. Um, so I'm enjoying it and that's what I'm drinking. Nice. I'm drinking an apricot lemon blanche. That's correct French pronunciation for everybody out there too. <laughs> uh, this is uh, from uh, Fieldhouse Brewing and they're in uh, Abbotsford. Ooh. Abbotsford, BC. I don't think I've ever had this one before. Uh, it's delicious. It is delicious. Got a nice everything. Mm. Yeah, this one's been going down real nice, real easy, and uh, it's been really terrific for what's uh, been kind of a very nice spring day today. Kind of, at least earlier today it was. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I enjoyed this conversation. It was, it was, it was good. Uh, you know, I definitely got fired up as we were talking about some stuff. Um, you know, I think, uh, for, for me, it's like, m one of my biggest things is just like, I, I want, I want people who have a dream and who want to do good in the world to realize they're unstoppable. And setbacks are part of the game. You know, they're part of the thing. So like, don't let them stop you and don't hang out in them. You know, I think that's the, the, basically my point is like, you're going to, basically you're going to find out that you're going to run into challenges and obstacles and things that are in your way that make life more difficult adversity. Right. So when you encounter whatever that is, you can look at it and be like, oh, this sucks. Oh, this life's so hard, right? Don't do that. That's a bad move. <laughs> okay. Other times you're going to look at this stuff and most times you're going to be able to solve it simply by going, do I go through this by pushing harder, by digging in, by doing whatever? Do I go around it? Do I go over it? Do I go under it? You know, what do I do to get around this? And if you keep looking at ways to get around problems, challenges, obstacles, whatever they might be, you will find a way. If you just keep looking for options, most things will be solved that way. Some things will not be solved that way. These are what I call setbacks. Setbacks mean that you have to actually, you've tried, you've looked at it, it doesn't work. There is no way around it, not from the position you're in or whatever. You literally need to back up, sometimes a little, sometimes a lot. 
look at that as a necessary part of solving it. Don't look at it as like this begrudging thing, as this thing that's like a waste of time. Look at it as, um, look at it as part of the approach, you know, as part of the way of figuring out your way. And, you know, and you brought in this before we talked about it, Evan, you talked about persistency and, you know, be persistent, but at the same time, recognize that persistence isn't just trying the same way over and over and over again. Persistence is about trying many different ways and sometimes going the way that you really don't want to go simply because it's the better way to get around the problem that is more valuable to get around than to not get around. And you will make those decisions and you'll figure them out. But setbacks, they teach you a lesson, they're a gift. If you look at them that way and, um, you know, and you can always move forward, but sometimes you have to move backward first to do so. Well said, my friend. You know, one of the things about, you know, this, this term setback, you know, is it setback implies that there is some sort of vision of a place that you're going. And so I want to just, maybe wrap up talking a bit about that. You know, you've got, there's something inside you, hopefully, you know, hopefully you're not, you're not pushing yourself into some direction that actually isn't meaningful to you. I'm, what I'm saying is under the assumption that there is something that you're doing, something that you are heading towards that has real significance for you, that speaks to the fire that is in you as a human being. And when it comes to, as you're saying, like setbacks are just like, well, that's just, when you have that thing, you find, you just, it's about just finding the, the path that gets you there. That's really all it is. You know, you're just kind of throwing out the path that wasn't going to get you there and taking the one that, that might, you know, or at least the one that she's like, okay, that got me a little bit closer and that, and this one's got me a little bit closer. And this one, um, this one is exactly what I want to be doing. This one is exactly where I want to be going. Um, so yeah, you have that fire is the thing that, that is precious and take care of that fire, you know, take care of that thing. Um, and accept where you're at, accept the things that are, are going on. So much of this conversation and like many of our conversations are all about perspectives for a large part. I think that that's most of what these podcasts are. We're trying to just find what is a better perspective on the problems that we come up against? How do we first accept them so that we can become creative? I think that that's really the only way we can become creative is by, is by actually being able to live in some sense of truth. And well, what is truth is a big conversation to have. But I mean, (laughs) what is the thing that's right in front of you? What's the thing that's staring you in the face right now? That is staring in you in the face and it's just in every single bone and fiber of your body. You know, that's, that's whatever the truth is for you. And, uh, and once you can get on with accepting it you can get on with being fully creative and moving forward through the setbacks thank you for listening in on our conversation today we hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you head over to our website wayoftheartist.com for more free exclusive material and learn about the show If you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going.